Let's do plank on knees. Starting with plank, we must understand the shoulder blades first. In plank, I suggest hands wider than shoulder width apart to help recruit your serratus anterior and pectoralis major. So you're not just using triceps and pec minor. First things first, let's sag down. Chest goes down, shoulder blades come together. This is called retracting the scapula. Okay, this is the alignment that you would be in when you're all the way on the ground. But we're at the exact opposite, so protract. Push the shoulder blades apart. Now the tendency, again, I'll just say it again, is the pec minor will tend to overtake this action, even though the serratus anterior is a big muscle that can do this. So think about widening the collarbones a little bit and rotating the biceps to face forward. And then the bottom of your shoulder blades move apart. Head lifts up. Bottom of your shoulder blades move apart. To recruit pectoralis major, squeeze the arms in. And now you should start getting kind of fatigued. Arms squeeze in, shoulder blades apart. Look a little bit forward with your eyes and your chest. Separate the bottom wingtips of your scapula. Push apart. Okay, then take a little bit of a break. Next step, we're gonna do forearm plank. So you can do forearm plank on knees, which would be like, you could also lift the knees up. Scapula, so you know what that feels like. You're gonna feel it kind of gets heavy, okay? Then do the opposite, push the shoulder blades apart, and you'll feel it gets, even though more effortful, it'll feel lighter. And push through your elbows specifically to get the bottom wing tips of your scapula to move apart. Okay, protracting the scapula. And then retract your shoulder blades all the way. And then protract, push through the bottoms of your elbows. So now try to come up to plank, forearm plank with knees lifted, shoulder blades fully apart. Really protract the scapula. Now let's melt for a moment. Retraction and then push, protraction. Well, let's go plank on knees and we'll do a, a push up down to the ground. So first step is to allow the shoulder heads to move back as you bend your elbows. And then you slow the descent by imagining you're doing a push up back to plank. You slow the descent, head comes up. And here we are. All right, come to a wall. Let's do chaturanga at the wall. And let's go shoulders up and forward. Just feel this anterior tilted scapula. Then go shoulders up, back, and then push through the heel of the hand. The shoulder blades will draw down the back when you push through the heel of the hand. So you'll wind back up into a neutral position with your shoulders. You won't be lifted at all. But the reason why we go up first is to make sure that we undo the pectoralis minor. So let's go up and forward and then down. This is gonna be pectoralis minor fully engaged. To unlock pectoralis minor, you would go up. That's the trapezius that would engage and through what's called reciprocal inhibition, pec minor would relax. Now you can go back into more retracted position in the tops of the shoulder blades. And then as you push through the, sh the heel of the hand, the body will go a little bit away from the wall. The bottom wingtips of your scapula start to protract a lot. Okay, so top of the shoulder back, protract the bottom wingtips away from the midline of the, the spine. Okay, and then release. Okay, that's chaturanga on the wall without any weight, of course, just working this push. And now a major difference for upward dog is it's gonna be more retracted than chaturanga. So we want essentially the arms to be more in extension, which is behind the chest, shoulders up and back, and the chest to be forward of the arms. So we'll try upward dog at the wall. This is not as easy. So I suggest taking fingertips to help with the wrist. And you go shoulders up, top of the shoulders back, retract the scapula and pull the chest towards the wall. And then lift up your heels, lift the chest up to the, the ceiling, stretch the belly. Can you stretch your belly? Tops of the shoulders back, chest towards the wall and up. Okay, then back down. So middle back towards the wall, chest goes up. Okay, what we can do to start our upward dog is grab two blocks. So blocks wide and even turned out, I suggest, 
to help the arm bones turn out. We take our knees back. Actually, let's go first. We're going to go from the side angle. You're going to take your knees between just to get the right actions in the shoulders. You can take your hands to blocks at the second height. And here we can go shoulders up, head of the arm bone, top of the shoulder blade back, chest forward. All right. So now let's take the blocks down onto the lower height and try upward facing dog. Again, I suggest hands wide. Your hands are going to turn out. The more you rotate the arms externally, the more it will help in a bit of that posterior tilt of the scapula and some of the retraction of the scapula will also be helped by externally rotating the arm bones. So all that will be supported by externally rotating the arm bones. Take your hands facing out, move your knees back and let's roll the shoulders back, chest in front, widen your legs. Now at this point, if you realize your arms are too forward and mine are to be able to get my chest in front of my arms, then I have to redo, which is a difficult thing because it's going to feel like you're leaning too far forward, but you bring your knees forward, melt shoulders back, then externally rotate and heads of the arm bones back, chest up. Now, right now I have my knees on the ground, which makes it easier on the back, but for some people uh, lifting the knees feels better. So either way, whichever feels best to you, activate your, your quads, activate your buttocks, pull your chest forward, lift the heart up and then knees to the ground to come on out. Reversal of the posture.